Hello and welcome back to Nick Tiffany's Movie Reviews in the audio form. You can find us in written format on our website, on all podcast networks, and on YouTube. Today, we're talking about another Apple TV Plus original film, The Beanie Bubble, which is all about Beanie Babies, the craze of the secondary market, this massive bubble that eventually had to pop. But, you know, an interesting story in terms of kind of chronicling this company's growth, following these three women who all had pretty key involvements in especially growing the Beanie Baby brand, and eventually kind of where it all shook out. You know, I think especially in this post-COVID world, there was a time where, you know, right before COVID, I'd gotten really into shoes, Jordans, Yeezys. New Balances, all kinds of stuff. I mean, you name it. You know, I was buying both as a collector in some ways, but as a seller in others. And part of it was this sort of, it felt kind of like a game. It was like, okay, cool. I put in some research time. I know which shoes make a lot of money, which shoes don't make you a lot of money. You know, there's certain colors that people flock to more. There's certain sizes that are a little bit more special because they don't make as many. This was a a one-off collab with this rapper. This was a French painter who designed the box and did whatever. There were just certain things that if you really spent the time to learn the market, to understand the products that were out there, you could make yourself some pretty good money, you know, but it's something that you had to do pretty frequently. It wasn't something where you could just come in with a lot of money and be like, oh, I'm just going to. I'll just buy a whole bunch of shoes and sell them for a little bit more than they're worth. Maybe now it's not, it's not that easy. And so it was really interesting watching this movie, having that little background that I have, whether it was, you know, meeting all sorts of people who do similar things, whether full time and professionally, like they own stores or they run massive Instagram and Facebook accounts where they're shipping to thousands of people or, Someone maybe who was a little more like me who it's like, yeah, I've got a network of a couple hundred people maybe. And, you know, you start to get an idea of what people are looking for. or Maybe you start buying for people and stuff. But it it was crazy how, you know, this world of shoes that I already hardly knew existed and these exclusive drops and, you know, 7 a.m. wake up times just for 2,000 pairs of something could really snowball into something where I'm like, dude, I know a lot about this. I know what's coming out four months from now, what just got pushed and delayed. And so I know this world. So when it came to Beanie Babies, it wasn't too surprising that it wasn't too dissimilar a story. You've got this guy, Ty Warner, who's played by Zach Galifianakis, who makes kind of plush animal dolls. And eventually he's like, I want to take things to the next level. And at one point, his best friend, I would say best female friend, especially at the time, Robbie, who's played by Elizabeth Banks. He kind of comes to her and he says, hey, you know, my father just passed. I sold all of his stuff. You know, I've got a little over 100 grand, whatever it is. Go into business with me. Let's make these almost stuffed. Or I forget what he like, semi-stuffed animals. Uh, and we're going to sell them. And we're going to make this a business. And it's going to happen. And so, you know, she comes on board. They start growing the business a little bit. People love toys. They love plush dolls. You know, everything's great. And then somewhere along the way, Ty meets Sheila, who's played by Sarah Snook. Single mother with two kids, two daughters, who really was like, you know, I'm not I'm not in the dating game. I'm not on the market. I'm just taking care of my daughters till they're 18, till they're adults, then I can focus on me. And, you know, at first Ty was kind of like, hey, you know, I respect that. I just, I just want to be around you, you know, and I want to be around the kids. And so, you know, he's bringing them different toys. He's letting them give them different names. He's, you know, he's in a way kind of getting product knowledge, though, too, from these kids. Like, hey, well, what do you kids want to see? Are there animals that you really like? Are there ones we haven't done that we should do? And then this idea, too, of like, well, what if you kind of change this one? Or what if you did this? And so, you know, you've got these two little girls who it's like, well, it's too big to bring those to show and tell. And so Ty is like, well, I'll make you little beanie babies, you know, little smaller ones that you can take around with you. You can take them to school. You can have them when you sleep. 
they're just super portable, whatever, you know, and they'll be soft, you know, we want to make them softer. And I was like, okay, sure. It really innocently was born out of this idea of like, hey, I just, I want to make these kids happy. You know, I really am a fan of Sheila, how I feel when I'm with them all. And so, yeah, let me, I'm like, I want to make them a little, I want to make them a little beanie baby. And we'll even let them put their little name that says, I designed, you know, she designed this one. And it's got a cute little poem in there. And then our third woman who kind of rounds it all out is Maya, who's played by Geraldine Viswanathan. And her character kind of comes in as an assistant. But real quick, it's already, you know, you can already tell, hey, she's got some business savvy ideas. You know, she rises along. I'm not going to say she rises along the ranks because she didn't. You know, she was kind of kept in this assistant role, but it was like, hey, maybe you go run some trade shows for me. Sell some of the beanies. Try to sell some of the beanie babies. You know, you've got an idea for marketing and you know what people like. So let's put you out there. Everything sold except for the beanie babies. They just they couldn't do it. And so one day Maya gets the idea to tell one of her regular customers because you know the toy convention you've got all these toy store owners coming to buy bulk orders look at the new product and he's like well you know can i do 15 of that one you sold me a couple weeks ago and she says "Ah, you know what unfortunately that was a limited run and so we don't have any more of those and i'm not sure we're going to be making any more and honestly that kind of makes those ones that you have more worth it or like you know more worthwhile as far as the money goes and exclusivity because they're never going to come out again, but we will be making this, this, and this. And he's like, well, you know, is that an exclusive run as well? And it's like, well, yes, it is. Well, then I got to grab them. And immediately, that's kind of where the story really takes hold is this idea of its exclusivity. It's not just supply and demand, but it's, can I get something that nobody else has? Can I find this mythic item that I know exists somewhere out there, but I've never seen with my hand and with my eyes and my hands. I've never held it. And really quickly, you've got like small communities in their area of moms, dads, children who it's like, you know, we got to get this one beanie mom because they're not going to make it again. And it turns into this craze where people are making guidebooks on all the best stores to go hit to find these things. And I'm like, that sounds familiar. Whether it was me doing my own, I'm like, because when I started bartending a lot more, I'm like, hey, there's certain wines, there's certain liquors that I'm looking for that you just cannot find at your Safeway or QFC. You know, I'm like short of going to a liquor store where everybody, you know, a major one like Total Wine might have it. You're looking for these small little mom and pop shops. And it's like, how the heck did you get this thing? I will take it. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe someone had it. So, I'm, you know, it's, it was entertaining to watch this kind of take hold and watch how these ideas snowballed. And it's like, okay, cool. Not necessarily like an offhand suggestion that turned it into this big deal, but you can mark the influence that all of these women kind of had, the hand that they had and creating just the little beanie babies. You know, Maya is also the one who kind of had the idea to put, you know, for her, she was writing them as raps. But, you know, it looked like poems on the Beanie Baby, on the Beanie Baby tags. And it's like, oh, you know, moms are like, that's so sweet. This is, it's not just a toy. It's been made with love. There's meaning behind this. It's got a birthday, you know? And it just, I mean, it took off. And they're printing money. And Ty's becoming close to a billionaire, you know? But what about everybody else? Because they're all kind of left on the bottom floor. You know, unfortunately, he was a very me, 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 me. I mean, even though you maybe helped with part of the idea, like, I'm the business guy. Like, it's my company. So it's kind of like it's my idea. Like, I did it. You know, like, I pay you for your ideas, you know. And this kind of really smarmy, you're like, ugh, this feels kind of seedy. I don't really, I don't really like that or how he's kind of approaching it. The movie itself, like... <laughs> I guess for me, that's kind of where my interest stopped. It was like once we kind of got like midway through the film and it was like you kind of see this taking form and the crate is happening. It's like, this is fascinating. It's like, now are you going to land the plane though? But granted, this was a different kind of plane. And I've had this experience with Apple TV original movies before where 
the film kind of feels half baked. I wasn't sure if they were making it for Hallmark or for Apple. And that's not to dis that's not to diss Hallmark films or anything. They all serve a purpose. Every film can serve a purpose to somebody. But it feels like they were I don't know, it feels like kind of a lackadaisical approach to this story. I mean, there are moments that are genuinely like Okay, cool. We got a good pace here. They're leading and building to something. And then you're like, and we're going to take all your air out and we're going to return almost to drama, but it never wants to get like too messy either. It's like, well, we don't want to call anybody a bad guy in this story, but you know, he was just kind of being a jerk, you know? And it was kind of like, oh, oh, you know, the performances are good. They're enjoyable. Um, you know, if you already have Apple TV plus, you could watch it. Uh, you know, it's tough going from stuff like Tetris and Cha Cha Real Smooth, which are like probably their two, I mean, the new Steph Curry doc, I would say as well. Two or three of the more standout films before we get to their big like festival releases later in the year where they've got Ridley Scott and Martin Scorsese films. But it just kind of feels like we were like filling this void. You know, and again, it's that COVID void where we're like, we're going to make projects. They're not going to be like full movies, maybe, but they're going to be mostly like 75%. I don't know. I feel like you just kind of caught caught up somewhere in there. It is an interesting premise, but I, it didn't totally entertain me the entire way throughout. I kind of was hoping for a little bit more, especially from Sarah Snook, obviously just coming off of the uh, finale of Succession. Love seeing her in anything and have loved seeing her for years and stuff. And so it was kind of like, oh man, like, I just wish you got to do more in this movie, I guess. And, you know, people like it. Zach Galifianakis is his best role. It's his, one of his greatest. I don't know. It was good. He was good. But it's like, you know, let him be evil. I don't know. Or let him, like, rage a little bit more if that's really the character. I don't. There were moments where I felt like they all could have gone just a little bit deeper. Maya was probably the, the standout for me, maybe. Geraldine did a great job, I think. You know, she's popped up in a few films recently here and there, too. But by and large, you know, I don't think this is one you actively have to seek out. I think if you were curious about the story, you could probably read a really entertaining news article that I think sums it up well and just kind of gives you some crazy figures and examples. Because that's like, I'm, I'm waiting for figures in this movie all the time. And there were some, but I don't know. The beanie bubble. I'm sorry to burst it, but it wasn't for me. Maybe it'll be for you guys, though. I don't know. Until then, check out Tetris. Check out Cha-Cha Real Smooth. The Steph Curry doc. I mean, there's dozens of, like, really good TV shows on Apple TV Plus, too. So I'm like, you know, we're, we're moving in, I think, to the grander quality. But until next time, thanks for listening, you guys. You can find us, NT Movie Reviews, on all social media platforms, YouTube, podcast deals, whatever subscribe and stay in the know on what's happening in the movie world. Thanks again.